Good morning. I'm so pleased to be here. And I'm so pleased to be able to share with you some of the experiences and the activities that we're doing at SpaceX. I do believe that what we're doing at SpaceX will uh, bring proximity to the globe. It's a god-awful small affair To the girl with the mousy hair But her mummy is yelling no And her daddy has told her to go But her friend is nowhere to be seen Now she walks through her sunken dream To the seat with the clearest view And she's hooked to the silver screen But the film is a sad thing for For she's lived it ten times or more She could spit in the eyes of fools And they ask her to focus on scenes Fighting in the dance hall I still get chills when I see our videos. They're fantastic. And one of the reasons why we make these videos is to kind of bring back people's looking towards the stars and being excited about space and space exploration again. For those of you that don't know about SpaceX, we are a small company solely devoted to the concept of building space transportation systems that will ultimately take people to other planets. We've got our initial sites on Mars, but there's plenty of places to visit after that. Our, we're focused on rapid innovation, and uh, we actually have almost 7,000 people right now, over $10 billion worth of revenue on the books, and we've successfully flown the Falcon 9 and the Falcon Heavy launch vehicle 52 times. We've taken the Dragon spaceship to the International Space Station successfully 14 times. And we're doing this not to necessarily to make money. In fact, we joke that the, the easiest way to create a, uh, a small fortune in, aer in the aerospace industry is to start with a large one. <laughs> but what we are focused on doing is, is lifting people's eyes to the skies, thinking about space exploration again, and harnessing public imagination. The driving principles and these are relevant for any entrepreneur, set audacious goals. And by the way, we, we were talking about audacious goals, and I'm so glad that this week the Audacious Project was, was announced as well. It's one of the founding kind of words that we use at SpaceX, is audacious. Think big. Even if you fall short, you probably have done something extraordinary. We have a relentless focus on on driving innovation and improving every cycle. You ch achieve that by proximity and by feedback, instantaneous feedback. We have a building block approach to what we're doing. We started with a small launch vehicle, Little Falcon 1, flew it a couple of times, went to a bigger vehicle, Falcon 9, glued three of those Falcon 9s together to form the Falcon Heavy, which you saw in the video, first thing. And then our next project uh, on the launch vehicle side will be the big Falcon rocket and the big Falcon spaceship. And that will be the vehicle that ultimately transports people beyond Earth. Our people are our greatest resources, for sure. We walk that talk. It's not just a saying we make. We could never do what we did with a, uh, without the workforce that we have. They are extraordinary people, and they work hard every day, very similar to you all here in the audience. 
wanted to chat just or give you a tiny bit of background on the company. I think it's relevant for entrepreneurialism. We started in 2002 and we ended 2002 with about 14 employees, actually exactly 14 employees. I was the 11th employee at SpaceX actually in 2002. This is my 16th year at this extraordinary company. And since 2002, what have we achieved? We've, we've launched 52 times. Uh, we will, this year, if we maintain our manifest, we will, we will have launched as many vehicles as, as our competitors who have been in the business for uh, many dozens of years longer than us. So we've launched 52 times. We've landed many times as well, and that's the key piece of technology that's necessary in order to look to the stars and take people to other planets. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. Rapid operational reuse. Imagine if rockets were more like, or imagine if airplanes were like rockets today. Right now, rockets are used once. You spend millions of dollars building this capability, and after its mission, you toss it, or it gets tossed, it tosses itself into the ocean. I think that's a bad steward element of, uh, of the environment. So not only do we want to reuse this capability so that you can be more like an aircraft. Think about going from, uh, from London to Los Angeles. If that aircraft was only used once, not many of us would fly and proximity would have a very different perspective. We'd have a very different perspective on proximity. So we must be able to make rockets reusable and that's fu fundamentally what we're doing at SpaceX and achieving uh, most recently. I'm gonna show you a video of how you do achieve great things. You start with failure. So I want to give you a slightly different perspective of landing a rocket. Instead of being third person, I want you to be first person. So imagine yourself on the top of this booster and you're coming home. This is slightly sped up, but not that much sped up. So hopefully you will all experience that. And I'm going to do another beauty shot of the brother and sister boosters landing side by side after that Falcon Heavy, that extraordinary Falcon Heavy launch in February. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so we focused on the rocket piece and I do want to talk a little bit about the, the crew cabin piece. Uh, we are working with NASA. Uh, we were one of, uh, one of the two companies that were blessed to have been given the uh, very difficult but critical job of taking people back uh, 
uh, to space. So we are working diligently on upgrading the Dragon cargo ship, which currently takes supplies and food to the International Space Station. We're upgrading that to be able to carry astronauts again, which is an extraordinary program. We're making great progress. We should have a vehicle capable of taking people to the ISS later this year, and we will demonstrate that uh, in an autonomous mode this year as well. Very exciting program. So we've got Falcon 9, we've got Falcon Heavy, we have Dragon. Now we're going to move on to the next vehicle, and that vehicle is incredibly exciting. That will be the, the ship that takes people to Mars. But there's also some other things that that vehicle can do that will help more people on this planet gain proximity. <laughs> I am particularly excited about that capability rather than going to Mars. I can visit my customers overseas in Dubai, in Riyadh, in London, uh, and get home in time to make dinner. <laughs> Which I also love doing, by the way. So you take that spaceship, you leverage it to really change the possibilities and the transportation here on Earth, and then you can also leverage that, that ship to take people to Mars to explore to go beyond where we've gone before. This is just a quick kind of summary of kind of a, a thought piece on what settlement, a settlement on, early settlement on Mars could look like. So hopefully you've learned a little bit about SpaceX, about what we're trying to do, and the possibilities that are enabled with thinking about space transportation in a completely different way, as well as leveraging that to bring people closer together here on Earth. Thanks very much for your time this morning. Thank you. So um, I have a, like a real beginner's question. I'm sure you get asked this all the time, but um, I read that men are from Mars and women are from Venus. <laughs> so I'm just wor wondering, is the plan to send the men home to Mars and we're <laughs> going to go to Venus? Because I think it's a lot closer, right, Venus? So is that the plan? Venus is a little closer, but it's toxic. <laughs> just good to clear that up. <laughs> I have a more serious question for you. Um, Star Wars or Star Trek? Firefly. Yeah. And uh, I have to ask you about climate change. It's been a big theme for our forum um, this year. And obviously, 
Elon's been very outspoken in naming climate change as a great threat uh, of this century. And of course, he took a stance in withdrawing from Trump's advisory committee once the Paris Agreement was kind of questioned. So thank you for your organization's leadership on that. And I just got kind of curious if you have other projects or things in mind, other than the sustainability of the rockets, which you kind of spoke to, which kind of guides what you're doing, um, thinking about climate change. Well, we're actually, there's no question, Elon doesn't have companies that, isn't, uh, that aren't focused on making our planet better, and part of that has to be focused on what you're doing to the environment. Um, that little fella. Yeah, exactly, and our children. Uh, th there's a number of things that we're doing. We're moving away from uh, the carbon-based fuel that, uh, that we're using right now on Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy to a LOX methane system. Um, we're also ensuring that we have enough uh, capability of our vehicles so that not only do we not want to pollute the planet by trashing the vehicles and dumping them in the ocean, uh, but that we're bringing them back and reusing them. And then when they're done, they become monuments, actually. They'll be monuments galore all over the planet of the, of the rocket ships. So cleaner propellants and ensuring that we're not just dumping all that metal. Thank you. And I also have to commend you on the leadership that your organization also took over the recent revelations around data and, and privacy. SpaceX deleted its Facebook page, am I right? Was that a difficult decision? Because, I mean, I just have to commend you for kind of stepping forward and, and making a statement on the importance of protecting, you know, democracy and elections. Uh, there are a lot of difficult decisions. I don't think that was one particularly difficult decision to do. Gwen, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us.